really excited to be with you guys today. This is one of the most fun parts of my job. And I think, you know, one of the most dynamic parts of our industry that's rapidly evolving and changing, um, e-commerce marketing. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a brand's perspective on how we look at this in relation to sort of the rest of the marketing mix and make some of the choices and decisions that we have been over the last couple of years. All right, so everything begins with the shopper or consumer journey. And we know that that has been evolving rapidly over the last few years. And we also know that it is going to continue to evolve. So we're paying a lot of close attention to what are the new um, marketplaces that are popping up, like Curiata, which is more new and recent. Um, what are the right places and touch points across a really robust journey that makes sense for our brands? Now we know today's shopper is really channel and device agnostic. So it's, they are looking for the most comfortable, the most seamless, the most frictionless experience that they can find. Um, uh, but one of the key things that all of our teams across our marketing teams, our sales teams, and our you know, trade or customer and channel marketing teams is really understanding where that consumer shopper is today and how we make every touch point where we engage as easy and simple as possible and as few clicks away from being able to actually purchase us as often as possible. Um, so digital has really changed how consumers behave. I think this is, this everyone is very clearly aware of. Yes, e-commerce is, in many instances, another incremental revenue stream, but it's more than that. It is also another brand building moment and opportunity. So yes, there's a lot of activity you can do and you can fo focus your objectives on driving sales, which is a big part of what we do in this space. But we know that 50% of sales, retail sales in general, online or offline, are, are influenced by the experience consumers have online. So look at that whole bottom portion of that iceberg, right? Those are, that, that's a whole lot of activity that people are looking at and doing online that is not resulting in an e-commerce sale in that immediate moment, but they might go to an account later that afternoon and order an Aperol spritz, or they might, um, end up in their liquor store that weekend and end up purchasing a product there. But it's recognizing that e-commerce platforms and partners, yes, they're a sales channel, but they are also a brand building channel that critically influence purchase in that moment as well as outside that um, in the offline world as well. So as we think about how we want to show up in this space, um, it's really interesting as we see that prime, you know, eye level placement uh, becoming increasingly elusive. So an interesting example up here, you know, you take the shelf at a retail store, over 100 SKUs, pretty typical what you would see in many stores. Then you get to a desktop digital experience, you're looking at 15 SKUs, right, on that first page of search results. Then you take that to mobile, where more and more consumers are increasingly purchasing their, their products. You're now looking at two products on that first page. Why is this important? So let's take a real life example from one of, um, uh, one of the platforms. Um, let's look at Instacart. Let me see if this works. Oh, it does, great. So an Instacart, a company that is valued at over $38 billion, reaching over 82 million households, 70% of their beverage alcohol sales come from that first line that consumers see, that top row that consumers see when they go online. That's a really significant amount of sales. It really reinforces how important what we call the digital shelf is um, across our different partners in that space. But it's not just about that. Just in the same way in you know, uh, the world as it has been, it's not just about where your product is on shelf. There's also multiple other touch points that lead up to that moment. The same way there is in an on-premise account um, and an off-premise account. So at Campari, our approach is to really consistently show up at scale at those right key touch points. And that can take many different forms. So one example you see up here is you know, a portfolio solution around brand spicy or smoky margaritas. So you can see here a banner that showed up on one of our partners' homepages with Espolón Tequila, Grand Marnier, Ancho Reyes Chile Liqueur, or Monte Lobos Mezcal, a really reinforcing a, a solution for consumers around margaritas at the right time. Or it can take the form of custom boxes and packages with partners such as Shaker and Spoon. And here on the left, you can see one that is available right now on their website in anticipation of Negroni Week, which is the week of September 13th, where we're really embedding Campari into that at-home occasion as more and more consumers over the last 18 months have become um, really interested in learning how to make more cocktails at home. Or it could even take um, the, um, the mode of expression of search results. 
So wanting to show up in organic and paid search results in new ways. So we've been revamping our own digital footprints to optimize them to show up as often as possible in that organic search result when customers are looking for our brands or our categories or solutions or drink solutions that we know we can provide. So for example, how to make the best spritz. We absolutely want to make sure Aperol is showing up there in a very clear way. So these are a couple of key pillars that we think about on a regular basis that drive a great online experience and great engagement with our brands um, across all different platforms. How is the product showing up? How is it represented? Do you have up-to-date product images? Do you have a variety of images? So, you know, we've seen increased confidence and higher sales when we have multiple different types of photography attached to our products when they're available. Lifestyle, recipe, and basic bottle imagery. Do we have great reviews and consumer engagement? Again, increasing the confidence and ease with which a customer can make a choice online. How discoverable is our product? Where are we making sure we show up? Um, and, and that we have really strong copy and motivating copy attached to where we're showing up to educate and, and answer any questions the customer might have at that moment in time. So those are two of the most influential factors in driving a great, great engagement and great experience online. Now this is an attempt to map some of the services. Okay, there are some missing from here. I deeply apologize if I've missed one that you like to use or that you have co-founded because there's so many new ones popping up all the time. Um, but the most important thing here is to really think about which ones are the best fit for your brand. So when you're thinking about that, you're thinking about who is your audience, who is your target consumer? What kind of audience do these different platforms reach that are the best fit for you? The other thing to think about are what are the different activities that these platforms offer? And um, you'll notice on different brands at different times of year, different activities with different platforms will give you different results. I just said different a whole lot of times. <laughs> and I, I think that's, this will lead into something I talk about later, which is just doing a lot of testing and learning. But you will find that one platform, maybe an email blast that they do the, to their consumers, is much more effective at driving a higher click-through rate and then potentially leading to actual conversion on site than, say, the same thing at the same time through another platform. And those are only things you're going to learn as you try to do them. So I highly encourage you know, testing and learning with as much you know, from an informed perspective as possible, but there is no clear playbook on what the best solutions are, and they vary depending on the brand, depending on the message you're trying to get across, um, and depending on the platform and, and how, they, how closely they engage with you to co-collaborate on something that feels really organic and authentic. All right, so if you're a brand and you're wondering, how do I start, or you've likely started, but maybe how do I improve, what are a few key things I can think about? So I just mentioned one of them. Do not be afraid to test and learn. Like this is what everybody is doing. They are um, making the best informed choices that they can with the amount of information that they know, partnering with um, other platforms that are also sharing and, and collaborating on what would make sense for their audiences and trying it. Um, these are a couple of examples of some stuff that we found worked well, but this is just a small fraction of what we're doing. Um, and we really are taking a look at what we can learn from everything we try in this space. So here you see a Grand Marnier storefront banner for Cinco that generated 75% new consumers. So these are people that purchased the brand on that platform for the first time ever, according to the platform's data. Um, you know, we're trying different placements of our brands and those solutions in different categories with the Aperol Spritz, with Aperol and Cinzano Prosecco and the wine category. And then cross-merchandising the same way you would, um, you know, in an offline retailer. You know, with a food pairing, with Sky Vodka, you know, in the fish aisle, the digital fish aisle, which generated new consumers. Um, and in the spirit of transparency and inspiration that this session is all about, here's some uh, competitive examples. That, that continue to sort of push the envelope in different ways of bundling your message and your products to solve uh, for a consumer occasion or a consumer need. So I think what I really like about these examples, which all come from Instacart and they're all competitive to ours, um, but they're based in what is the ultimate end consumer experience and you bringing that to life as much as possible. So, so getting ready for summer, you're getting ready to either have your small group of friends over or start some of those celebrations or you're getting ready for the big game, which can be the NBA playoffs or insert sport of choice. Okay, another key concept is consistency. Um, so this is not a new concept. Many of you, I'm sure, are already doing this, but it's about really being diligent about the fact that we know 
in general, not even just in the digital realm, but consumers need to see things more than once for it to, uh, to resonate, be impactful, and drive any kind of perception or behavior change. So knowing that, and knowing that number is at around five, five exposures <laughs> to a message before they actually have a behavior or perception change, we try to be very consistent um, to help, help consumers on that journey so it doesn't feel like a brand new message each time that there's like something in there that sticks in their memory. Um, so Aperol is a really good example. I think online and offline, we're very consistent about how we show up with that brand, really bringing to like the vibrancy and the joy of the moment, um, real clarity about the occasion, and constantly educating about how to make the best Aperol spreads. So the number one cocktail in Italy, the number 10 um, in the world, where we're just trying to bring our key messages really clearly and consistently to our consumer. Another good example is Sky. So we recently relaunched this product, new pack, new positioning, um, enhanced liquid. So it's now made with water, enhanced with Pacific minerals. Um, and we had a suite of different assets that we created for this. And in the spirit of the, the previous principle of testing and learning, we actually tried the lifestyle advertising. We tried traditional just brand blocking with the logo and with the bottle. We tried um, copy that was very conversion oriented and almost trying to lift what we would do in store online. And what we found performed the best almost across all platforms was the lifestyle imagery from an e-commerce perspective, which was really interesting. We weren't actually necessarily expecting that. We were expecting a bit of a different response. So the beautiful thing about e-commerce marketing is that it allows you to see these, these learnings and optimize in real time. So you can update that creative and ensure you're getting like the best return on your investment as quickly as possible. Um, okay, and lastly, it's about being clear on your purpose or your objective. What are you trying to achieve in this channel? I mentioned at the beginning that, yes, it's an incremental revenue stream. Yes, you're trying to close a sale, but also recognizing the role it can play in building your brand. So there's different tactics you will choose based on which objective you have more at the forefront of your mind. So if you're trying to drive trial, you're gonna think about how you're partnering with the direct-to-consumer delivery services that are being very clear about how to use your brand and bringing it to life like in the Negroni box with Shaker and Spoon or something we did with Cocktail Courier with Sky during Pride Month and the Lavender Cocktail, as an example. If you're trying to drive more awareness, um, you know, big visibility on high reach platforms, you know, might be what you're going for, but it might not deliver the immediate conversion in that channel, but you understand that it, that's where consumers are, that's where they're discovering new products, and it'll result in sales in the channel and outside of the channel, as an example. And my last slide, I swear, is um, about driving traffic. So, you know, the concept of build it and they will come, I don't think anyone in this room subscribes to that anymore. You really need to know where your consumer is and drive them to where they can convert to purchase. So for brands, it's not as often the brand site anymore. Like typically we always drove to the dot com. Now more and more, and what you see here is an example of a collaboration ad we do on social media that drives to some of the, um, some of our marketplaces like Minibar or Drizzly or Reserve Bar. It's really making sure that we are making it as easy as possible and as few clicks as possible for consumers to purchase our products when they are experiencing us, when they are experiencing us and seeing us online. So thinking through how you do that. There's also now some suppliers that are doing white, white page, whitelist paging for some of the brands within the marketplace. So there, the space is constantly evolving, but just thinking about how you wanna show up here and make sure you're not leaving any, what we call dead ends, anywhere in your digital ecosystem. So a dead end would be, Someone's there, they see your brand, but they are not clear on how they could purchase it in that moment. You wanna make sure you're always giving them that clarity and ease um, to get to that point. And so that is really what I had to share with you guys. This is just a bit of a summary. Ensure you have a super strong digital shelf. Avoid dead ends, make it easy for them to convert. Think about the consumer occasion first and recognize that this channel is evolving and growing every day. So stay open to new opportunities and, and always test and learn.